Thank you very much for introduction. I'm Gen Takahara from Osaka University, Japan. It is a great opportunity for me to attend this very interesting workshop. I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to the organizers of this workshop for their kind invitation. In this workshop, the several speakers talk about ultimate scaling in summer convection. And in this talk, I would like to discuss ultimate heat transfer in wall banded shear flow. That is in turbulent permeable channel flow. And this is my joint work with my colleagues, Dr. Motoki, Dr. Shimizu, and my former student, Sugawa. And let me recall the ultimate scaling in Lady Venal convection, which several speakers already talked about in this workshop. Our important dimensionless parameter in this system is Nusselt number. That is a dimensionless wall shear, excuse me, wall heat flux normalized with thermal conduction heat flux. And there are rigorous upper bounds on Nusselt number in this flow, given by Charlie, Rich, and so on. And in this upper bound, we see the factor ready to one half. And this ready to one half scaling of Nusselt number has been given by Spiegel long time before at extremely high lady number summer convection. And in this scaling, wall heat flux scales with, with temperature difference and buoyancy induced terminal velocity. And this is independent of summer diffusivity. It is ultimate scaling. And if we recall rigorous energy budget equation in this system, ultimate scaling relates Taylor's dissipation law. In Taylor's dissipation law, epsilon is energy dissipation and it is independent of kinematic viscosity. And in this case, again, we have velocity scale, the buoyancy induced velocity scale cubed over H. H is the full height of the uh, fluid layer. And in real situation, in numerical simulation and experiments, what we see is a classical scaling, the exponent of which is around one third. It is quite distinct from our pet scaling. I'm going to talk about the uh, wall bounded turbulence. And in this case, we have two dimensionless parameters. One is friction coefficient, and the other is the Stanton number. And the Stanton number is also wall heat flux normalized with temperature difference and forced flow velocity, such as buoyancy, excuse me, uh, bulk mean velocity. And it is very well known that CF is decre decreasing with increasing Reynolds number in smooth pipe here. And we empirically know that there is analogy between turbulent heat and momentum transfer. So decreasing CF implies decreasing stanton. And how about fully rough pipe flow? as shown here. And in this case, at high Reynolds number, we see constant CF in fully rough regime. And please recall that in this configuration, energy budget equation relates energy dissipation rate with pressure drop and CF, friction coefficient. So constant CF implies Taylor's dissipation law. And how about ultimate scaling? 
In this case, Stanton number is given here, as I mentioned just before. So ultimate scaling implies constant Stanton. But in this case, we see constant CF, but we see decreasing Stanton. So I can say that in this case, we cannot see ultimate scaling. Uh, please note that in buoyancy, excuse me, uh, the rough pipe flow, we see the constant CF, but the uh, stanton decreases with increasing Reynolds number. So in summer convection and in wall body turbulent flows, it's very hard for us to observe ultimate scaling. Our prior research shows that dull C type simple wall permeability induces a Kelvin Helmholtz instability in permeable channel flow. As a consequence of the instability, we see the very large scale span wise rolls, as shown here. And these rolls induce wall normal uh, fluctuation velocity to highly enhanced momentum transfer. Actually, as you see, CF in permeable case is much larger than that in impermeable case. Therefore, we have recently introduced this Darcy type permeability in Lady Benal convection and observed very large scale thermal plume. And we also observed ultimate scaling at the higher lady number. And in this workshop, in poster session on Monday, we have shown our uh, recent results on ultimate scaling in more realistic permeable world. Here we see the ultimate scaling in this configuration as well. So in this talk, I'm going to pursue a possibility of ultimate scaling in wall banded shear flows. And as you see, we consider the boundary condition, no slip permeable wall. The fluid in channel is internally heated uniformly, and we see the boundary here. That is a porous wall that is a kind of a bundle of straws connected with a plenum chamber. So if we have the pressure difference between channel and chamber, we could expect wall normal velocity across the wall. And uh, we suppose that the whole of the permeable wall is small enough. The Reynolds number is very small. So we, ex we expect linear relation between pressure difference or pressure fl fluctuation with respect to the chamber pressure and wall normal velocity. And beta is a permeable parameter. And this is a boundary condition at the lower wall and the upper wall. And please know that in our boundary condition, we impose non-slip and isothermal condition on the permeable wall. Therefore, in case of permeable wall, we still have viscous and conduction layer on the wall. These are the basic equation. Incompressible Navier-Stokes equation and uh, energy equation. And momentum equation and heat equation, we see the similarity in the sense that we have corresponding term here, 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 and here, except for pressure fluctuation term. We often have the similarity between heat and momentum transfer. But sometimes we encounter this similarity stemming from this pressure fluctuation term. Mean pressure gradient and internal uniform heating will change in time. 
so that we may have temporary constant bulk mean velocity and bulk mean temperature. And this is permeability parameter. We set this to impermeable value, less permeable value, and permeable value. Reynolds number is changed in this range, and Brandtl number is set to unity, and we suppose our flow is periodic in all parallel direction with periodicity here. We perform Fourier Chebyshev direct numerical simulation. And these are the averaged heat flux and shear stress. And you see similarity between two equation. And here we have friction velocity. And this is a friction temperature. This is the energy budget equation. In addition to energy dissipation, pressure power, we have two additional terms coming from the wall permeability. One is the pressure power on the permeable wall, and the other is outflow energy across the permeable wall. And we confirm that it is very small numerically, and that this is rigorously non-negative, implying it is uh, energy sink. So I can say that in this configuration, the introduction of wall permeability do not, does not lead to any additional energy input. That is uh, energy sink. And at higher Reynolds number, we confirm this term is comparable with energy dissipation. And this is a mean velocity profile in less permeable case and permeable case. In less permeable case, we confirm that mean velocity profile exhibit inner scaling or wall scaling. You see the mean velocity profile scale scaling with friction velocity and friction lengths and we see logarithmic layer here. But the uh, thing is quite distinct from this less permeable and impermeable case. You see, in permeable case, except for near wall, very near wall region, we don't see any wall or in, inner scaling. And what we see is uh, outer scaling, you see, the mean velocity scale with UB and channel half height. That is quite distinct from usual wall turbulence. And the same is true of mean temperature. We see inner scaling in less permeable case, but not in permeable case. Again, we see the outer scaling of the mean temperature profile with bulk mean velocity and channel half height. And how about RMS velocities? As Sergey mentioned yesterday, the behavior of RMS velocities is a bit complicated. But anyway, in contrast to the behavior in less permeable and impermeable case, what we see is the outer scaling of RMS velocity in wall normal direction and streamwise direction, you see. Scaling with bulk mean velocity and channel half height. And the same is true of RMS temperature. It's a bit complicated in comparison to the RMS velocity. But uh, I can say that if we compare the, this behavior to the less permeable case, we see almost a constant scale with 
bulk mean temperature. So I can say that RMS temperature also scale with bulk, bulk mean value in permeable case. And now I'm going to talk about uh, the scaling of Stanton and CF as a function of Reynolds number. As you see, in an impermeable case, CF and Stanton take the almost consistent values at each Reynolds number, and they decreases, decrease with increasing Reynolds number. That is a classical scaling. And how about less permeable case? The same is true. And we see consistent CF and Stanton, and they decrease with increasing Reynolds number. However, in permeable case, we see the classical scaling at lower Reynolds number, but we can observe the critical transition from classical scaling to ultimate scaling. At the higher Reynolds number, not only CF, but also Stanton are constant, being independent of Reynolds number, implying the ultimate scaling. And please recall that in case of the rough wall, we see constant CF, but decreasing Stanton, no ultimate scaling. But now we can see the ultimate scaling in permeable case. And I'm going to look into the flow structures at lower Reynolds number on classical scaling and at higher Reynolds number on ultimate scaling in permeable case. And this is a wall normal velocity on permeable wall. And at lower Reynolds number, that is subcritical permeable case, we see insignificant wall normal motion on the wall. However, at higher Reynolds number in supercritical permeable case, we see significant wall normal fluctuation on the permeable wall. And the fluctuation is organized in the spanwise direction. And this organization is a consequence of the uh, the appearance of spanwise large scale law as a consequence of, uh, excuse me, uh, stemming from Kelvin Helmholtz instability, as I mentioned before. And this is slide shows the spanwise average velocity profile, velocity and temperature. And as you see, at lower Reynolds number, subcritical case, we don't see any significant organization in the spanwise direction. And what we see is a usual tubular vortices. As in impermeable case, they are visualized with positive isosurfaces of a second invariant of velocity gradient tensor. On the other hand, at the higher Reynolds number in supercritical case, we see the very significant uh, spanwise organization of flow structures and temperature. We see large scale spanwise loads and associated with large amplitude of temperature fluctuation. And we also see the clustering of the smaller tubular structures in spanwise loads. And this is the near wall velocity and temperature at lower Reynolds number and higher Reynolds number. At lower Reynolds number, we see almost quiescent velocity and temperature in viscous sublayer. However, at higher Reynolds number, even in linear sublayer, we see very large amplitude of fluctuation in velocity and temperature fields. And please note that we see the significant similarity between 
velocity and temperature field. This is because we don't see any flow separation in this configuration, in spite of large amplitude of uh, fluctuation. I have shown neural velocity and corresponding neural temperature isocontours in this figure, but uh, they are almost stuck to the wall, implying no separation. In rough wall channel flow, we observe the flow separation downstream of the roughness. So we see the vortices, these vortices highly enhance momentum transfer. But in thermal field, the thermal conduction layer is still stuck to the wall because the temperature does not separate from the wall. That's why in this case, in fully rough regime, we see the constant TL, but decreasing stunt. This is similarity. But in permeable case, relaxation of near wall high pressure prevents flow separation. So we can see similarity. That's why we see not only constant CF, but also stanton, implying ultimate scaling. This is a physical interpretation of ultimate scaling. In permeable case, we see the kelvin helmholtz instability generating large scale span wise rope like this. And this has a, a comparable length scale with the channel half height. And this structure is very large, so they can induce a large amplitude of the uh, fluctuation velocity comparable with bulk mean velocity. And please note that in this case, we see the similarity between the heat and momentum transfer. So temperature fluctuation also comparable with bulk mean temperature. Therefore, in this system, we have the length scale H, velocity scale UB, and temperature scale TB. So energy dissipation can be expressed in terms of UB cubed over H, Taylor's dissipation law, C, constant CF, and similarity. So wall heat flux scale with TB times UB, ultimate scaling, and the constant stunt. A couple of more minutes. Thank you. Oh, you're great. Yeah. And now I would like to conclude my talk. Ultimate scaling can hardly be observed in wall banded turbulent shear flows. In turbulent non slip permeable channel flow with viscous conduction layer on the walls. On the other hand, Taylor's dissipation law and ultimate scaling can be observed. Ultimate heat transfer is attributed to large scale similar turbulence promotion without flow separation as a consequence of Kelvin Helmholtz instability at higher levels number. Thank you very much for your attention.